Sure. 65 at O'Hare, next news, 730. Chicago's Morning Answer continues next on AM560, The Answer. Now, from the Signature Bank Studios. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy, the uh, race hustlers are not going to go away quietly. I guarantee you that. And they'll continue to produce tomes like Ta-Nehisi Coates' new book called The Message. And they'll continue to get amplified by the corporate media like Coates did uh, on CBS Mornings to uh, move books to fill his pockets so the hustle can continue. Uh, although I got to tell you, I was shocked by the question that was put to Ta-Nehisi Coates, who is, among other things, a virulent anti-Semite. But um, w- uh, one of these uh, Gail King gal pals uh, really put it to him. Good, Ta-Nehisi, I want to dive into the uh, Israel-Palestine section of the book. It's the largest section of the book. Mm. And I have to say, when I when I read the book, I imagine if I took your name out of it, took away the awards and the acclaim, took the cover off the book, the publishing house goes away, the content of that section Mm. would not be out of place in the backpack of an extremist. Mm. And so then I found myself wondering, why does Tanahashi Coates, who I've known for a long time, read his work for a long time, very talented, smart guy, leave out so much? Mm. Why leave out that Israel is surrounded by countries that want to eliminate it? Why leave out that Israel deals with terror groups that want to eliminate it? Mm. Why not detail anything of the first and the second intifada, the cafe bombings, the bus bombings, Mm. the little kids blown to bits? And is it because you just don't believe that Israel in any condition has a right to exist? Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say the perspective that you just outlined, um, there is no shortage of that perspective in American media. Um, That's the first thing I would say. I am most concerned always with those who don't have a voice, with those who don't have the ability to talk. Um, I have asked repeatedly in my interviews whether there is a single network mainstream organization in America with a Palestinian American bureau chief or correspondent who actually has a voice to articulate their part of the world. Um, I've been a reporter for 20 years. Um, The reporters of those who believe more sympathetically about Israel um, and its right to exist don't have a problem getting their voice out. But what I saw in Palestine, what I saw on the West Bank, what I saw in Haifa in Israel, what I saw in the South Hebron Hills, those were the stories that I have not heard. Wow. And that reporter, his children do live in Israel with their mother. Uh, Coates, in the um, opening, uh, the opening sentence of the section of the, his book that's re- referenced, he writes... Um, On the last day of my trip to Palestine, I visited Yad Vashem, the World Holocaust Remembrance Center. Your last day of your trip to where? Mm -hmm. Um, Palestine is a country that has never existed. Um, Yad Vashem is in Jerusalem. So uh, Coates clearly believes that uh, Israel, (laughs) whether Israel has a right to exist, he doesn't even believe it does exist. Forget the right. You know, in a, a more sane America, I keep saying this phrase, this lead-in predicate to um, how things are. In a more sane America, Tani Hesey Coates would be a marginal academic at some university that nobody's ever heard of, that certainly wouldn't be a best-selling author, wouldn't... Uh, you know, be invited to the North Shore so these, you know, ghastly champagne socialists in places like Will Matt could gather round and listen to his wisdom. He's a he's a he's a crank. He's an academic fraud. He's a race hustler. Um and but he's playing the political game of solidarity and marginality the same way that Rashida Talib does. In a sane world, he nobody would know who Tanahishi Coates is. And everybody would know who Bob Woodson and uh, his collaborators on their new book are. I mean, they're relatively well-known, but uh, not only should they be well-known, their scholarship should be 
uh, uh, widely consumed. And we're getting there, but it's a long road, especially when you're up against uh, the machine that uh, we just provided an example of. Bob Woodson is the founder and president of the Woodson Center. He's the author of Red, White, and Black, Rescuing American History from Revisionists and Race Hustlers. The new book, the new book just out, they had a little confab about it in D.C. A Pathway to American Renewal, Red, White, and Black, Volume 2. A Pathway to American Renewal is the new book to pick up. Bob Woodson joins us. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. Always a pleasure to spend time with you. So, um, I mean, you know, I mean, just co- a commentary on, on, you know, on coats and sort of where things are at. I mean, some of these guys have run into some trouble, guys and gals. Uh, the founders of Black Lives Matter, they've run out of money. Uh, uh, Ibram Kendi has sort of run out of money and run out of goodwill at Boston University. But, um, you know, I just, I don't know. I, you, you tell me how well you think things are going. Well, I think it's going. It's it's improving. I mean, the fact that Abraham Kindy could, in four years, raise forty eight million dollars for his re- so called research institute at Boston University, and it was supposed to do research uh, on the, on racism. They haven't produced any studies. His brother in law was able to borrow a half million dollars. Uh, to put down on a, uh, in the luxury apartment building that he's purchased in in Boston, um, but nothing has been produced yet. It hasn't produced the kind of scandal uh, that that it deserves to be. This is a major scandal, but there's just silence. Uh, and and but and and Coates is the same thing. They have what I call the racial shield. That it shields, there's a sword and a shield, a shield against any accountability for the foolishness that they, that they produce, and a spear to, for anyone who dares speak up and challenge them. Uh, but our new, our new book challenges them in, in ways that I think are being very helpful. Um, Dan, we've had in, in our last book over 200,000 downloads from the curriculum that we've developed from the book. And it's it and is dramatically increasing. On this book, Pathways to American Renewal, we have not only scholars but activists who are also uh, in the business of implementing these principles and re- restoring communities and redeeming individuals based upon the the founders of this the founding principles of this nation. So we hope this will be uh, well read as well. Um, and and. Uh, how, how is how is it uh, how are you getting into the schools and and getting to the activists to to press this? You know, what, what how, how do you guys get treated? Because, you know, I don't see like uh, people coming at uh, Bob Woodson, not publicly, at least, or, or Glenn Lowry or Ian Rowe. You know, the, when they can't you know come at you to sort of deplatform you, they just try to ignore you and hope you go away. And it seems like that's the approach that's generally taken. No, it is, but it's it's not work in one sense that the book sold out uh, in the first uh, three months. It sold out, and for the publishers, did not expect a book of, of essay to sell out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we we have had downloads in every state. We're, in fact, the school system and the People's Republic of Oregon have asked for and are using our curriculum. Uh, and, 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 and like in like Oregon, that's a good example. So so once you when you get into the school system there, I mean, is it then sort of just woven in and people actually um, start reading it and they see there's um, a lot of merit to what's being said. And so the controversy dissipates that just becomes it, it does, ex- but, accepted. But also the fact that John Hopkins School of Edu- uh, did a review of our curriculum and gave it five stars. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so um, the state of New Hampshire now has adapted it as a, as a part of its curriculum. We are been getting invitations to educational associations. In other words, we've had a lot of contact on parent groups, particularly ch- parents groups that are challenging uh, school boards around the country. We've done a number of, of, of webinars with groups who are, are seeking to control and take over their school boards seeking ammunition to, for their argument. So it's been used by a variety of people um, the, who are fed up with the status quo and fed up with being woke 
Um, uh, so we, 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 we really think momentum is on our side. The fact that corporations are dismantling DEI um, and um, the universe, we work closely with the state of Utah, for instance, with the governor and the leadership. We brought 35 grassroots leaders together at, at the governor's office, and, and they have passed uh, a law requiring civics be taught again a Western culture be taught, and DEI is gone. The money is uh, money is going to be in transferred to student services. So we're seeing cracks in the wall that I think are going to accelerate. What state are you focusing on next? Which state? Yeah, is there a plan? Uh, well, we we've gotten we're responding to requests from about seven different states. Um, I don't know the ones, but I do know Oregon. Um, uh, New Hampshire. In fact, on Black History Month, New Hampshire ran weekly I mean, uh, commercials uh, on our curriculum. Um, there are some really dramatic stories of here of, of American values in action. In Toledo, Ohio, for instance, there's a, there's a story about three black uh, barbers who headed a, 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 an organization the Underground Railroad, and they um, had as participants 1,200 white farmers and two Native American Indian tribes in you know, Toledo. And and when the Fugitive Slave Act came in, their response was to help 50,000 slaves escape through the Underground Railroad. They didn't lose one uh, person. So th- that's a very untold story of America's values at its finest. Uh, for 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 uh, parents and parent groups uh, that are interested, you know, g- can you uh, give us sort of a general characterization of the nature of this curriculum, what it does and doesn't do? What it does is, is it tells uh, inspiring stories of blacks who achieved. Betsy Coleman, it talks about the first black flyer, how she was able to learn to fly and taught a, a, a born a washerwoman in Alabama and went to France and le- learned to speak and write French and learned to fly and came back and started a flying school. Um, many of the Tuskegee Airmen knew how to fly before they went there, but they learned from Betsy Coleman. There are a lot of inspiring stories of, uh, of, of, of blacks, for instance, who were born slaves who died millionaires. It tells the story of the Bronzeville section of Chicago in 1910 where there were 731 black-owned businesses, $100 million in real estate assets in Bronzeville alone. That was a, kind of a black Wall Street. Well, that, and so there, there, in other words, we tell a lot of stories that, that challenges the myth that the problems that we're facing in the inner city today are the legacy of slavery and Jim Crow. That is just not true. It's a lie. And this book, provides ample evidence that when whites were at their worst, blacks were at their best. Only in America could someone be born a slave and die a millionaire. And there are 20 to 25 that we have documented who were born a slave, died a millionaire, and, and, and used their fortunes to assist others, um, even a, a whites, who were struggling were helped by some of these black millionaires. And uh, and give us a, a sense to the broad scope of, of the academics uh, and doers that are contributors to this uh, book of essays, as you mentioned, the pathway to American renewal. Well, we have Dr. You know, Glenn Lowry is, is one of our, and Shelby Steele, um, John Sibley Butler, University of Texas in Austin, probably the most learned scholar in the area of history of, uh, of blacks in business. Um, and um, Janice Rogers Brown, uh, uh, Justice, uh, she's a contributor. So we have uh, just, a, just a variety of, of, of people, people whose lives were, were, were predators and who have been redeemed through God's grace and now are leading neighborhood organizations in, in various cities around the country. So it's a celebration of American values and action um, that puts the lie to this notion that America is systemically racist and, and that Coates and others continue to uh, convey. 
uh, it's very uplifting that people are inspired. Uh, Joshua Mitchell uh, from Georgetown University is one of our contributors. Um, so we just have, uh, we're very excited about uh, the book Pathways to American Renewal, Red, White, and Black. Uh, Bob Woodson is the founder and president of the Woodson Center. Again, the book, Pick It Up, A Path to American Renewal, Red, White, and Black, Volume 2. And uh, while you're at it, you can also pick up Red, White, and Black, Rescuing American History from Revisionists and Race Hustlers. That's sort of Volume 1. But Volume 2, Pathway to American Renewal. Bob Woodson, thank you so much for joining us. As always, appreciate it. And thank you, Dan. Thank you, too. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. Connect with Dan and Amy on the AM560 The Answer mobile app. Just text the word APP to 64636 to download the app today. We know what a woman is. And at Natural Womanhood, we believe that a woman's fertility is beautiful, powerful, and healthy. Not something to be controlled or destroyed by doctors and big pharma. Women deserve better. Women deserve to know and claim the